Hi guys, what's going on? So, as you know, last week I went to the photography show at the NEC in Birmingham and it was amazing. I'm telling you, absolutely everything was there. You got cameras, lenses, tripods, drones, absolutely everything. And there was uh, professional photographers there doing tutorials, showing you how to do different lighting and taking different types of pictures. And it was amazing. Um, but afterwards, after the show, I came out and the Comic Con in Birmingham was on at the same time. And as I walked around um, into the lobby, there was a group of people uh, dressed up as Justice League. You got Batman, you got Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, um, and Aquaman. And someone was uh, posing them to film them, and he wanted to film them walking forward for something. Um, so I thought, oh, it's a great opportunity to take a picture. So I got, got in there and I took a picture. Um, and this is the picture that I took. As you can see, that's in the lobby of the, uh, the NEC. And there were stairs behind them. And there was people coming out everywhere. And there was other people doing shoots in the background and that. But I thought, it was a great opportunity to show you how you can take any picture like that. Granted, it was a nice picture, it was posed well, um, and the lighting was good. Uh, you can take the background out of any picture. If you want to change the background and blend in your characters or whatever subject you've got into a new background, it's possible with Photoshop. Um, so, with that, taking up too much more of your time. We're going to jump into Photoshop. We've got a lot to show you. And I'm going to show you exactly how I took that picture and turned it into this one. So, we're in Photoshop now and I've imported my photo, the Justice League um, characters. Um, this was taken obviously at the NEC in the lobby area and um, although I didn't get cyborg in very well for the rest of the characters look pretty good um, as I took the picture pretty quickly um, there is some issues like Aquaman looks a bit uh, asleep um, and there's some people up here coming down the stairs and there's actually another photo shoot being taken over here uh, but we're going to get uh, sort that out later. So the first thing I want to do is just to make this picture um, a bit more flat, um, take some of the shadows out um, to start with. So I'm going to bring the shadows up and maybe bring a little bit of the highlights down. Um, I want to sort out the temperature because it's a, I feel like it's a tiniest bit too orange. Gonna bring that down. Also, I want to uh, sharpen it, and I'm going to sharpen it quite a lot. Possibly in the 90s, 95. Just bring some of that detail out. Um, I want to put a bit of clarity in. I don't want too much. I just want a bit of detail, but I don't want clarity is going to bring in some of the contrast I've. I want out. So I might bring the shadows back up a bit more. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up just to bring out the colours on the costumes. Like so. Uh, maybe bring that temperature down a bit more. There we go. Now, because I took the picture pretty fast, it is a bit wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate that to where it looks straight. That looks all right to me. So I think that should do for now. So I'm going to open that image. Now once we're in Photoshop, what I want to do now is cut these characters out. There's a lot going on around them, 
so it's a lot of tweaking but what I like to use is the um, quick selection tool and what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer first so now all I want to do is just drag around the characters um, what I'm going to do first is do a rough um, mask first, make sure I've got everything. So now I've got everything in the mask, but as you can see, there is a lot of other stuff that is picked up. So we're going to subtract that now. And the best way to do that is to hold down Alt and your cursor will change from a plus to a minus. And we're just going to drag up while holding Alt to the bits we don't want. And we just want to make sure we get rid of as much as we can. So once we've got rid of most of this unwanted stuff, um, what you can do is actually press the um, layer mask button. So as you can see, we have some bits left over on the arms, um, here in, in the sword, and around the heads there is bits. Um, we can go back if we want and um, subtract them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and using the brush tool and making sure that the, the mask is selected, um, we can actually brush in on the unwanted bits and it will take away from the mask. If you change the colour to white, we can add in parts that have been cut out and change back to black to subtract parts. So that should do it I think. All those pieces have been subtracted and any stray bits have been put back in. Um, the next thing I want to do is just to sort out the problem with the uh, long hair like on Wonder Woman is that you get this harsh edge especially around here where a hair has gaps in it you can see the background. So we're going to Go to the uh, layer, mask, right click it and refine mask. And I'm just going to take this brush with the cross in the middle and I'm just going to go over these parts and it should 
subtract those edges and you can actually go around the edge of the hair as well just to take that harshness out of it in places and also I'll go over to Aquaman and do similar as he has long hair too press ok and I'm just going to touch up um, these parts here So there we go, we've cut them out. So now we need to make the background. So I'm going to go into a new layer, which is a portrait layer. I'm going to, I'm going to do this picture in portrait. Um, and I'm going to bring those characters over. And place them somewhere in the middle, the lower part, part of the uh, picture. I've got a few photos here. I've got some mountains and some st stormy sky and some texture, concrete texture that I'm going to use. So I'm going to bring in this texture here um, as my floor and I'm going to place that towards the bottom I'm just going to zoom out a bit what I want to do is just put that below the characters like that now it's looking a bit flat so what I'm going to do is press Control T to bring up the transform tools I'm going to right click it and go to perspective and from here you can click and drag the corners and this perspective will come out and I just want it to kind of look like it's flat so somewhere around there press enter and we'll zoom back in and now the floor kind of looks like it's going off into the distance now we can fine tune that by moving it around, but I think it's good how it was. So now I'm just going to hide the characters for now. Next I want to bring in the sky at the top portion. So I'm going to bring in my stormy sky. So I'm going to hold down shift and drag the edge and if you hold down alt and shift it will bring out both edges so I'm going to bring that out to about there press enter I'm just going to put that underneath the floor just to hide that edge and now you can move it around to where you think looks good I think maybe there looks good this portion here so now this edge looks a bit flat and I want to just put some sort of um, horizon in here so I've got these pictures of mountains I've got this panoramic uh, mountain range which should look good right across the middle so I'm going to bring that in I'm just going to make that the size of the picture and then I'm just going to put that above the floor and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub out this bottom half with the eraser tool I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 
70. And just start from the bottom, just sweep across up to the mountain ranges. Just to blend that in. I may move that down a tiny bit. Now for the sky, I'm just going to use the quick selection tool. I'm going to select the mountain range. Like so. There's a bit there. Select this bottom half as well. And then I'm going to press Shift, Control, and I. I'm just going to delete that top half. Like so. Next, I want to just put some more mountains off into the distance. So I've got this mountain range photo here, which I'm going to bring in. And I'm just going to scale that down a bit and place around about there. And I'm going to put that underneath the floor layer. And bring it up a bit. And I'm going to press Control T to bring up transform tools. I'm just going to stretch it a little bit around towards the middle All right, so press enter and now I'm with the uh, brush tool the um, sorry the eraser tool I'm just gonna erase like I did before on the top half and I'm just gonna do it roughly I'm not too bothered about the top of the mountains as it will give it like a, a foggy effect and this edge as well, just so it blends into them um, clouds. And then what I want to do with that layer is right click it and duplicate. And I'm just gonna move that across. And I might even control T and flip just to give it a different feel. I might move it control T and I might even stretch it up a little bit. So now we need to uh, start to colour these um, mountains. Obviously these ones look too orange. Um, so I'm going to go to those mountain ranges here and we're going to hold down Alt and go to the effects and I'm going to go to human saturate, saturation and make sure you clip on the clipping mask is checked press ok now I'm just going to play with the saturation and the hue so I'm going to bring the saturation down a bit so it's not so bright and maybe change the hue just to match A little bit better, and then I might even press Alt and go back to levels just to bring a bit of contrast in that mountain range. Next I'm going to bring um, the, the core of the floor um, down a bit um, using the same hue and saturation 
uh, might bring the saturation down a tiny bit and change the hue a bit more purpley like that. And same again with the sky. Change the hue, maybe to a, a greenish tint. And use some levels on the sky also just to bring a bit of contrast into that sky. At this point I'm going to bring the characters back just to see how it's looking. And the composition is not too bad, I don't mind that. I might bring the, the levels of the floor down a bit more, it's looking a bit too bright. so. I'm going to bring in curves. I'm just going to bring them down a bit. Like so. And then I'm going to um, play with the characters now because they look a bit too bright. Um, like before we brought up the colours um, just to keep that detail in there but we're gonna now manipulate them so the same before pull down alt and press the effects button and we're gonna go to um, hue and saturation saturation press ok and I'm gonna bring that saturation down a bit the hue, I just want to maybe bring in a tiny bit of green, just a tiny bit. Exposure down a tiny bit. On them. So that looks that looks okay at the minute. Um, they still look like they're floating. So now what I want to do is I'm going to bring in some shadows. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer underneath the characters and I'm going to take a black brush, um, a soft brush and I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 35-ish and I'll make a fairly large brush and I'm just going to brush around the feet so like that and what I'm going to do is bring the opacity down slightly just to feather it out now I'm going to create a new layer above that one and with the same brush I'm just going to make it a bit more harder, maybe 50% and bring the opacity up about 70 and I have a smaller brush I'm just going to go a bit tighter around the feet
I'm going to bring the opacity of that down slightly. I might bring the opacity of the first layer up a bit. So now that's without, and this is with. It just brings in some shadows to make they look like they're standing on the ground. In that first shadow it looks a bit harsh so what we can do is go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and just bring that up a bit. Just blur that out. As you can see it just softens that a little bit. And I might bring the opacity up a little bit more on that. So now what I wanted to do is to blend them in a bit better, I want to uh, create some fog in the background and in the foreground. And the way I did that was I created a new layer underneath the characters and I got a light grey brush, not too dark. and. The type of brush I used was one of these chalk brushes. I think I used number 23 here. And I made it quite a large brush. And the opacity was down to about 30 maybe. We'll try that. And I just brushed around behind the characters. and over the mountains. And I brought the opacity down a slightly. And then I made a layer above the characters and did the same effect just around the feet. might even have a darker grey around here too. So that's looking good. Um, I still need to uh, blend the characters in a bit more. I still feel like they are sticking out a bit too much. So I made a layer. I'm going to make a layer above the characters and I'm going to fill it with black and I'm going to right click the layer and click on create clipping mask which will make the characters black. I'm going to go to layer, layer mask and hide all. And this will hide all of that black that was around the characters. And now what we can do is take the brush, a white brush, and we'll check on a soft brush. And what we want to do now is a brush. You can brush now anywhere and the black will appear through. So we'll undo all that. And we want to bring up the opacity a bit, maybe to 70, and we're going to brush round the edge. Maybe bring that opacity down actually. I'm going to brush around the edge of the characters. We're basically creating shadows. I'm just going to turn off that fog for now. I just want to brush around edges.
So that just gives us a bit of a shadow edge. What we can do now is just bring the opacity down. So that's without. And then bringing it back in. Like so. But with that and with. It just takes all that highlight out. So that's looking good. Now we just need to um, colour correct all this and make it look a bit more realistic. So I want to um, put a photo filter on. Um, instantly you can see it makes it look a bit better. Um, I want to put a little bit of a warming filter in. Maybe a little bit like sepia, kind of like that warming filter 81. And you can bring the density up if you want. I'm just going to keep it down to where it was. And you can see how that changes the colour a bit. It looks more cinematic. So now I just want to create a little hot spot in the background um, as if there's a light so what I'm going to do is behind the characters I'm going to create and maybe below this fog layer as well I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to get a white brush and it's going to be a soft soft brush I'm going to make it about the same, a small circle just in the middle here and I'm just going to bring the opacity down. I'm just going to press once, maybe twice there. And I'm just going to bring the opacity down a bit. And then I'm going to bring the opacity the brush down slightly and I'm just going to do a bigger one on a new layer like so and I'm just going to bring the opacity of that down and maybe a bit up here as well that just gives a little light and I might even make another layer and have a slightly orangey brush and do the same and just bring that opacity down so after that I'm just going to go to top layer and I'm going to press right click it and merge but if you press merge visible now all your layers will become one which I don't want just in case you want to go back so what I'm going to do is do the same press merge visible while holding alt and this will create new layer with everything that you've just created on that layer. Now I'm going to go to Filter and Camera Raw. So now we're back in Camera Raw. I just want to play around with the contrast and colors and shadows. Um, so first I'm going to bring up a bit of clarity and a bit of highlight and maybe bring some of the shadows down and I want to play around with the temperatures and tint as well so I want maybe a little bit of a purple and a warming colour
and I want to play around with the shadows on the characters so I like to use an adjustment brush and I'm going to bring up the exposure a tiny bit I'm going to use a new brush and if I paint on Wonder Woman's face you can see that now I can turn it up and down and I'm just going to turn it up a bit and what I'm going to do is I'm, every time I'm going to use a new brush and I'm going to paste for instance down her arm and I can turn that up and down to where I'd like a new brush and I can also create shadows by bringing down the exposure as you can see it changes where the light is coming and you can turn, go back and turn down individual bits so I'm going to go around all the characters and create these shadows and lights So now I've gone around all the characters, you can see when I turn them on and off that you can see that the shadows have swapped direction and there's more light on the faces and it just looks a little bit better. So now I'm just going to go back to the effects and I'm going to bring in a bit of vignette in on the edges. And I might adjust some of the temperatures. A bit more. Maybe a bit more clarity. Exposure. Highlights. We'll bring out that background a bit. That's looking all right, so back in Photoshop and now if you turn that layer on and off you can see the difference Camera Raw can do. Looking a lot better. Now to finish it off I just want to put a few lens flares in. So on top of this layer I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to um, Fill it with black and we're going to go to filter render and lens flares and for me the you can have all these different types but the 50mm to 300mm zoom looks alright to me you can change the brightness but I'm just going to keep it to where it was at 100 and you can move it around where you want it so I'm just going to put it on an angle like that and press OK then I'm going to go to the um, screening effects I'm not sure what you call these actually but um, I'm going to go to screen and that will take away the black and now I'm just gonna press ctrl T to bring up the transform effects and I'm just gonna move it over and maybe stretch it out a bit bring it down to that horizon line there 
press enter. Now because I've moved it, you can actually see a line here, if I zoom in to where it ends. So I'm just going to take the eraser tool and bring it the opacity down a bit. I'm just going to go across that line just to feather it in a bit. I'm going to bring the opacity down a little bit and I'm going to zoom into Batman's face. Poor Batman's got it all over his face so I'm just going to rub that out a bit. And I'm going to take it out of Wonder Woman's hair. Now I want to bring in this picture of this lens flare, which is a long one, um, which I just want to put on Wonder Woman's sword. So I'm going to bring that in, I'm going to flip it around and about where I want it, press enter. And I'm going to do the same, I'm going to change transform mode thing to screen and I'm just gonna the same again you can see this harsh line across the middle where it finishes so what I'm gonna do is gonna take the selection square tool and select around and I'm going to click on the mask tool. Then I'm going to double click on the mask on that layer and I'm just going to feather out until you can't see that line anymore. About there. Now I'm just going to reposition this over a sword and I'm going to bring the opacity down a, a bit and now I'm going to put a bit of hue and saturation on that layer just to bring the tint down to an orangey feel and there maybe bring the saturation down so it's not so harsh like so and there you have it. So yeah, that's how I created it. And it just goes to show if you get your lights and your shades right on your subjects to match with the background lights and shades and along with the colour in, you can create any picture. And along with little tips like putting in smoke in there and putting shadows under the feet. Um, yeah, it really makes a good picture. Now if you like this video, please subscribe. Um, if you got some great tips from it, like putting, cutting people out and putting smoke in there and creating backgrounds, um, I would appreciate it if you subscribe, like this video, maybe comment, tell me your views if you like the picture. Also, if you were the people in the picture, I mean, I did, sadly I didn't get to meet you, um, but if you are the people in this picture, please give me a message and I'll gladly send you the picture. Um, so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.